is the Glass Cannon Network. Inherit the sand. Hello, my name is Jared Logan. Welcome to the Glass Cannon Network. You have tuned in to the Glass Cannon Network and our presentation of Dune, Inherit the Sand, book two. Troy LaValle was the game master for book one, but you've made it to the second novel in the series. Congratulations, you're really reading. You're reading a lot. Boy, you get a lot of books finished. Good for you. Um, this is going to be uh, a second storyline with the same characters. We're going to expand the Dune universe even more uh, and learn more about these characters and see them in a completely uh, different but familiar situation. Um, I'm Jared Logan, the Game Master, if I hadn't mentioned that already. And of course, I have with me uh, the players of the previous five episodes of Inherit the Sand, Skid Maurer, Nora Ibrahim, Becca Scott, and Ross Bryant. What's up, guys? Hello. What's Hello. up, Jared? What's up? Welcome to book two, where I feel kind of like a substitute teacher, but it's Dune, so I maybe it's like a substitute reverend mother or something I like that. I am both <laughs> delighted and terrified. <laughs> you should say that. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, I think I, I think I, wow. Uh, Becca's, Becca and everybody have been uh, advancing their characters. Of course, they've already been through five episodes of Dune. So um, they have some character advancements coming to them. But uh, before we get into that, I want to just talk about book twos in general. Uh, do you guys, are, are you big readers? Have you, have, is, is there a series, any kind of series? Doesn't even have to be science fiction. Uh, that you've read like a couple volumes of. I'm a. I, I'll go ahead and answer for myself. I'm a big like read the first book and then never read the rest of them guy. Mm. That's what I've done a lot of. <laughs> That's yeah. What about what about you guys? I yeah. consume most content via ear holes. Mm. Yes. So I'm a huge Dresden Files buff, as I've yeah. talked about many times, um, and currently. Almost done with book one of Dune. Someday I'll learn about the Messiah. <laughs> yeah, you'll get there. You'll get there. Uh, yes. Anybody else? Uh, the, the, uh, a series that you've consumed a lot of? I don't know. I, mean, I have like severe ADHD, so it takes me forever to read something. But I will like consume mostly true crime podcasts, you know, continuously all day, every day as I'm working. But uh, ask me to read something, and it takes me forever to get through one book. So no, <laughs> I have not a no. I was, not since college did I <laughs> yeah. like I really have a, dive. A no phone in bed policy. So if I'm awake, but it's like time to go to bed, then I I have to read, and I only read the thing on my bedside table, and then I immediately fall asleep. So reading <laughs> is uh, fall asleep magic potion. I wish I could make a no phone in bed rule for my household because my wife will, for years has done this thing where like I'll wake up and it's like seven o'clock in the morning and I turn to her and her eyes are wide and she's holding her phone and she's like, you won't believe what the Supreme Court just did. And I'm like, <laughs> no, can't Isn't wake it, up like that. It's, it was the documentary, The Social Dilemma that made me do it. Yeah. I put my charger across the room. And that's that was the catalyst. Oh, good yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. gotta, yeah. The more you listen to Jerome Lanier, the more you're like, I got to get this thing out of my house. Anyway, mm -hmm. love looking at this screen and looking at y'all. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, Don't yeah, you yeah. turn off your screens out there in <laughs> glass cannon land. No, no. You're watching us on your PS fives and your uh, your uh, yeah. portable Nintendo switches and whatnot. Uh, get free Sony and that dopamine, y'all. Come on. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And I and I am maybe you know this about me, Jared. I I will like bore into a rabbit hole kind of compulsively. So if I get the first book, I want to just continue for the for the sense of completion. And I've I'm not yet through the original Dune sextet, 
because I, I, I'm five books in because I had to set it aside. And just in case anyone out there wasn't convinced that I'm like a, a pretentious little fancy boy, I, <laughs> I, I, set, aside, I set aside Dune because I was like, oh, I've spent so much time with this series. I'm going to, I want to try a different series. So I'm currently reading the first book of another series, In Search of Lost Time by Marcel Proust. And I'm most of the way through <laughs> Swan's Way. On la research to Tom Pedou. That's the one, buddy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You two peas um, in your pod, fancy boys. So I only the, know that because of Monty Python, because they mm -hmm. do a whole like game show about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Marcel Proust. Talk about yep. a book that would just sit on your nightstand for three years, not being read, if, if it maybe were me. I don't but know I, if I could I, do it. I got to say, like, I mean... Who to thunk that a uh, book that's world famous for its uh, its its beauty and lyricism? It's it's a dang treasure. Big fan. I really I really really like it. And right. I'll who, who knows? Maybe I'll continue and read the Germont Way, Sodom and Gomorrah, um, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. All the other, all the other, all, all the other. Don't wait till there's a Proust RPG. Um, <laughs> Ross, I, well, I, it's funny I don't want to I, I, I I criticize what you're saying right now, but who is this for? <laughs> you're like. <laughs> talking to one person out there who's like yeah Guillermo's way they're <laughs> loving it yeah th this is this is my brand is to make one person in a crowd of a hundred cheer while everyone else goes huh uh -huh. yeah <laughs> That one person is thrilled, though, right yeah. now. Yes. And Becca, if I can find a way to to uh, GM a Proust themed RPG on this network by 2025, I'll I'll consider it a victory. Hell yes, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna make it happen. We just I need to your life write decisions. it. <laughs> Great. We need to write it. We need to create rules for it. Come on, Glass Cannon Nation. Where are you on this? Help us out. <laughs> yeah. Um, roll for sense memory. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of sense memories, are you ready to uh, uh, contact the sense memories of your characters and enter the D universe? Ooh. Sure. Did Skid say what he's reading? Oh, yeah. thank you, Becca. Thank you. Oh, uh, apologies, uh, Skid. Uh, Skid, what series have you re read multiple books of? Uh, it's yeah. I almost always will drop a series before finishing it at the, for the same as most of the rest of you sounds like i mean the only one i've really finished i think is lord of the rings like multiple times but that's I a mean, feat I, yeah, yeah i mean that was pretty good those but are not I, easy books there's a lot of walking and looking at foliage <laughs> yes that's true <laughs> uh but uh as far as like books that i've started and i've started a lot that i've loved like uh the the book of uh book of the new sun the gene yeah, Wall book. Yeah. like i read the first one loved it Never moved on to the second one. Uh, Joe Abercrombie's First Law trilogy. Oh, yeah. Mm. Fantastic. I read the I first, read the first two. one of that. Yeah. Great. Great Amazing. characters. Is the uh, little misborn Brandon Sanderson in this house? Uh, yes. I love, and I, I read the first two of that. Loved them. Haven't moved you on to the third. You read two of a trilogy? I did. <laughs> you monster. <laughs> I don't want to know how it uh, ends. It's that's fine. what I'm like. I, I, there's so many things to get to, you know, it's it's tough. But uh, yeah. with Dune, I have read as far as Ross. I have read up to book five. So uh, we like ye. We like ye the Dune. Um, all right. Well, that's great. Um, well, welcome to book two. And just like in book two of Dune, everything changes. <gasps> everything is recontextualized. All ev Everything that's true becomes a lie and lies become truth. Are you ready to play? Yes. Ready? Maybe wow. question mark? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> House Houdin was triumphant. Like the prophets of old, they were cast into the fire and emerged unburnt and unbowed. Like the prophets of old, they cast out abominations and resurrected the dead. They were a house of miracles, but their miracles were stagecraft. When the true Messiah emerged, they were blinded by his radiance. Ten years have passed. Baron Vladimir Harkonnen is dead at the hands of the Atreides. His heir, Fade Rafa, was killed by Paul Atreides himself. House Harkonnen is no more. Now, if you'll recall, your house are vassals of House Harkonnen. Am I correct in that? Correct. Yes. Ah, so House Houdin, uh, nay Tyloris, because you are now uh, technically House Tyloris, uh, you were first exiled from Arrakis, 
and then you found you had no home to return to. Control of your home world, Thalia, which is part of the Gidi Prime system, has been given to the people of Caladan. The machines of industry have been dismantled, and this change of ownership was enforced by Muad'Dib's death commandos, who swept across the planet and put all Harkonnen loyal loyalists to the sword. Even some of your theaters and opera houses have been burned. Muad'Dib's jihad has destroyed your power base and destroyed your lives. So I ask, where are you now? And how do you survive in a universe where your prior allegiance to the Harkonnen could see you murdered by an army of religious fanatics? And let's start uh, by, by finding out where our Duchess, the leader of the house, has ended up. So 10 years have passed uh, and um, we, we can work out the details together, but uh, basically uh, the ascension of, of Paul Atreides has created a jihad that completely decimated the Harkonnen and all of their holdings. And as a vassal of the Harkonnens, your holdings have been decimated. So in all likelihood, Duchess Delessa, uh, you no longer have um, a fiefdom. Um, so I want to know where you think she has, she has gone and what she has done in these 10 years to survive, because Dune is, among other things, about survival. So tell me. Well, uh, perhaps not a duchess in the same way she once was, but I think that perhaps um, the Reverend Mother Jessica may have been lenient because my loyalty throughout all has been to the Bene Gesserit and the Sisterhood. And in these ten years, after fighting my own mother and capturing her, I believe I reported back to the Bene Gesserit to tell them that I chose them when given the option of this traitorous Bene Talaxu uh, rogue abomination, as they called her. I captured her and um, probably submitted to whatever the Bene Gesserit chose for me to do with her and requested that I be granted permission to become a reverend mother, which of course means that I must have survived the agony, the poisoning that I submit to in the presence of other reverend mothers. And if I'm able to change that toxin into something non-toxic within my own body with my pranabindu conditioning, then I will gain the other memory yes. that is held within any reverend mother that uh, allows me to have this ceremony. And I think that um, perhaps I went back to the planet of the Bene Gesserit. Wallach and, 9? Wallach oh, 9, yeah, I believe. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yes. Well done. Mm -hmm. I forgot to look it up again. Um, and uh, maybe there was a ceremony where a couple Reverend Mothers shared their other memory with me. Excellent. Uh, and so um, you were given 10 advancement points for your previous uh, adventures uh, with our friend Troy. And uh, so you have spent those advancement points on, I believe you said, a new talent. Is that correct? I did. I spent nine out of the ten because I had three talents previously. Prana Bendu conditioning, the voice, and a mask of power, which I never used. Um, <laughs> but I took other memory as my final one because I knew being a reverend mother would be super cool and was what I wanted to do anyway. Um, so it is a requirement of this talent to undergo the agony and then the the mechanical benefit is whenever you attempt a test where knowledge of past events even those which may have occurred many generations ago would be beneficial you score three automatic successes whoa wow. and i can share my genetic memory with other reverend mothers if i choose to um that's amazing um i i i think that it's going to come in handy uh and i think that it's really interesting that uh, our duchess you know, I had no choice. Uh, well, it was it was a choice. You wanted to take on the other memory and become a full Reverend Mother, but you you kind of ended up back with the Bene Gesserit, back on Wallach Nine, uh, and I think that this was a many years process to to get to this uh, level of mastery that you've achieved. Um, I've asked all the players to change a drive um, because 
Uh, you know, 10 years have passed and so your drives, the things that you believe in and that, that capture your principles have changed. What have you changed, uh, Delessa? That's a great question because it didn't change anything yet. My drives are so <laughs> awesome, Jared. Why would you make me change them? Well, <laughs> you don't, and you know what? Maybe she has stayed the same. Um, uh, you could simply change a statement though, uh, refine it. But if you really feel like uh, Delessa has remained adamant in all of her beliefs, I'm not gonna force you to change a draft. Well, my definition of justice was I pr- will protect those in my care, which came in very handy. But um, maybe I'll meditate on this for a minute because it may be that my definition of justice will have changed somewhat. Okay, so while Delessa uh, meditates in the groves of Wallach 9, uh, accessing her other memory, uh, while she has become uh, once again uh, uh, one, of, uh, one among many sisters, um, let me ask our, uh, our Fremen, uh, let me ask Corin. Uh, with the destruction of your house, the uh, ripping away of your fiefdom by the Atreides and their jihad, where has Corin ended up? And I'll just let our our players know you could you could stick together. You could stay uh, with uh, at, at the side of your of your Duchess, even though uh, she is a Duchess in kind of idea only now. Or maybe you've gone out and forged your own path for a while. Corin, where have you ended up? You're all invited to Wallach Nine, you know, yeah. if you want to stop by. Yeah. I'd love you to stay at my place. <laughs> um, Corin has absolutely stayed true to her duchess, however. Uh, in the time that has passed and what has come to pass with, uh, with House Atreides and House Arconan, Corin's ambition was glory through victorious battle, and it has not been victorious. And her faith has driven her throughout her entire life. And she originally, and for the longest time, deep down in her heart, felt like whatever small task that she has in her life is for a greater good. And now that is kind of shattered. And she feels like all of her years of service, and as she is still honing her skill as a sword master, she feels like there is something owed to her that she has not received yet. The universe owes her. Even the Duchess, she has like a little bit, while she still has devotion to her, has like a tiny bit of resentment, a seed growing inside her heart. And so I changed my power statement um, to, I will have what is owed to me. I love it. Mm. Yeah. Um, Um, Fremen are generally so... um, about the community, so it's interesting that you know your character has changed to uh, to have quite a selfish need mm-hmm. or drive. And I I also changed my duty statement to what must be done must be done. And uh. so the lines of um, what she thought was was truth and justice versus you know an enemy is kind of beginning to blur interesting um and you know if if you're just joining us for the first time on episode six or if perhaps you need a little refresher these drives matter on almost every role that you make um you have to see if the belief statement matches the action you're trying to take and you add the number beside the drive to the skill you're rolling and that gives you a target number you're rolling under so um, any changes to these drives and their drive statements really do, do change the character mechanically. Um, Corin, you were given 10 advancement points. What uh, did you choose to do with your 10 advancement points? Um, was I able to put it into a drive or a skill? Um, you, need, you, can, you cannot actually boost your drives. You can only okay. boost uh, your skills and 10 advancement points would give you an extra point in one of your skills. Then, but eight being a maximum, correct? Eight is your maximum. Okay. I am going to change my discipline, uh, which is still survival. I'm going to up that a point. Okay, great. So it goes from what to what? It goes from six to seven. Very nice. good. Um, so uh, uh, she has become more selfish. The lines between uh, right and wrong have become blurred for Corin, And yet 
her discipline has become even steelier and harder to break. Very interesting. Um, and now I turn uh, to uh, the Mentat, the envoy of the group, uh, Aurelius de Grom, uh, an envoy without a house. Uh, Aurelius, tell me uh, where you think you've ended up and how your character has changed. I, I have to admit, I have, I have kind of a hard time with these, the drives and the statements in these systems. And I want to get, maybe get your guys' y'all's input on, on it. So I'm thinking there's two different ways I could maybe go. So I think that when House Houdin, uh, when it was basically, de- it was basically destroyed, but when the Duchess married into House Tyloris, quote unquote, so he was, and that was his main, like his drive, was, his duty drive score was eight, and I am House Houdin, House Houdin is me. Ooh. So that was kind of destroyed in that point. And he, I think he was kind of ashamed too at like the cowardice he displayed in the face of danger, even when his like Duchess was in danger and everything. And kind of his faith in like this, the, 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 the Benny Tulelax, you know, in the house and it's now married like uh, his Duchess. And so when Duchess Delessa went and joined the Bene Gesserit, I'm thinking maybe he tried, at least asked to go with her. But I'm thinking either he was like, that that need to serve whether that transformed into a faith in the Bene Gesserit way or if that loss of everything that he held dear would manifest in a need for justice and revenge against the Atreides and the New Order yeah I don't know what you guys think I think that's a question for the players right mainly Yeah. What do you guys think? Interesting. I mean, the Bene Gesserit could probably make use of Mentats, even though they I don't will, have any in the order. I yeah. will answer. I will answer that a little bit, um, Becca. That the Bene Gesserit do employ all kinds of people, including male warriors, uh, Mentats. Yeah, they have an entire uh, staff of people who aren't actually the uh, the sisters or the Reverend Mothers themselves. So, yeah, so I think I would want to still serve the Duchess, having been sort of bereft of purpose otherwise. This is like a last kind of lifeline for him. But, yeah, I just don't know whether to make his main drive, the, if, he, if he just gives himself over to the faith in, in the Bene Gesserit way, or to uh, Zen Sunniism, or whatever or if he's just like i am serving i'm serving the duchess and the bene gesserit with the ultimate goal of bringing down atreides for what they've done to Um, me and to my house i mean that's i feel like you're leaning that way skid because that's that's kind of exciting like this sort of i mean you might say cowardly uh official efficient now has a revenge quest I think that's interesting. Um, that's mm-hmm. my vote: is that you change that you know a duty drive to reflect your 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 vendetta against uh, House Atreides. Okay, okay. I like Jared. I'd like your vote. Okay, so I will put my eight into justice, and then I'll put the seven into faith. Right. So that I do have faith in the sort of ephemeral. And then, so I'll I'll rework all these, but that's that's yeah. my main. Rewrite your drive statements uh, if you need to. Um, if they if they no longer apply, maybe you know something about the duty, like I must destroy House Atreides. Something that simple yeah. is completely fine. Yeah, I think um, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase my I am House Odin. House Odin is me, and move that statement to my justice score and say I will bring down House Atreides for what they have done to me. And I'm going to place our characters in context as well. I think that 
Corin, you are no longer, you know, uh, the sword master of a house. You now are part of a sort of combat force that the Bene Gesserit maintain. Um, perhaps, you know, they're not the most martial faction. They don't have massive armies. So probably it's kind of a, a small security force. Uh, and you no longer have uh, many of the uh, luxuries, many of the benefits uh, of station that you, you once had. You're probably living in a barracks with other warriors that the Bene Gesserit employ on Wallach 9. Uh, and likewise, um, I think that uh, Aurelius, you no longer speak with the voice of a house. You are part of someone who, uh, part of a, a team of people that deal with logistics. I'm just um, a functionary. You're just a functionary now. Um, but uh, what we really have to find out is what became of Dresden Tyloris, uh, mm. also known as Pharos. Uh, Pharos, <laughs> 10 years have passed. Thalia was taken from you. Uh, Gady Prime was taken from you. Uh, the, the moon of Melpomene was taken from you. The, you. You really came up in the world from spy to uh, to a heir of a house. Uh, yeah. But now you are now you have fallen low. Tell me what has happened with your character. Think, what a role shift for Pharos to to become <laughs> Dresden Tyloris to become like the lord of this house. Um, to and even though uh, Delessa is the power um, behind the the throne, and. Uh, Dresden was just the mouthpiece. Still, to get a sense of power, to get a sense of real power in this in this system, I think is quite intoxicating. And um, and the culture that that um, Pharos comes from, uh, I think, would see the rise of a tra of the Atreides as blasphemy. And we know from the from the uh, from. Dune Messiah, that the, the Tlaloks have now come out into the open and make common cause with the Bene Gesserit to destroy the Atreides. Um, and so that is, I think, his... He had power, lost it, and has, yes, a a, um, a personal now vendetta against, against the Atreides and a spiritual vendetta against them as well. <laughs> this, this Atreides theocracy is, is an abomination. It's blasphemy, and um, he wants to see it destroyed. And I think that the common, the the Plelax are a dark mirror of the Bene Gesserit, and they regard each other both with kind of mutual disgust. So I think it's a, I think working with the Bene Gesserit is a profoundly uncomfortable experience for him because he's probably, it, it would be like living in a state of constant discrimination where almost anyone he, he, he Bene Gesserit can instantly see through his disguise. So yeah. he, they know what he is and they despise, they hate what he is. And I think, in fact, your character has now become the Benny Talaxu uh, sort of uh, mouthpiece on Wallach 9. I think it, I'm yeah. maybe like a Benny Talax ambassador. Yes, you're an ambassador way. from like, my I, mouth I to the B Bene Gesserit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Very good. Um, uh, it makes total sense. Um, uh, I came back with a new statement. Oh, great. Ooh. What's your new statement? Okay, so I did have for justice, I will protect those in my care. We're over that. That's old news. Um, <laughs> well, I was going to do something kind of like karma. One of the examples is what we do returns to us. But given that everybody's out for revenge, uh, I went with something <laughs> a little more intense, which is the universe owes you nothing. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, I mean, Ooh. jaded. That'd be an everybody's... interesting contrast to mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The universe opposite. owes me something. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. and you guys, and you guys are are lovers. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's very interesting that you would have almost diametrically opposed drives. Um, let me ask. I, I'm oh, thinking of applying it to other people. Like, I don't know. I shouldn't worry about whether or not what I'm doing to people that oppose us is right because they're not owed anything. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Um, of course, the fun thing about drive statements is you can kind of twist them sometimes into other contexts if it benefits you as a player. So um, I like that drive statement because I think that that's one of those that you could kind of twist around a little bit if you needed to. 
Um, oh wow, ask, you saw right through me. Uh, <laughs> I, know. I know, I know how players think. <laughs> yeah, uh, the point Bryant, is to make these so poetic that you can use them in any situation. Yes, yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, Literally, that's, that's why I took what to what must be game. done must be done. I'm like that could be anything. <laughs> but I have to, I have to let you guys know I'm not going to allow you to use the drive statement. Hey, stuff happens. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, so uh, Ross Bryant, uh, Pharos, uh, how has his drive statement uh, or drives changed? Um, I, I, my, my current power statement is knowledge is power, which yeah. is definitely one of those poetically um, vague ones that sure. we were describing. Um, I think I will now change that to power belongs to the righteous. Uh, mm. that huh. is amazing. Uh, That's cool. and, um, I haven't, I need to ask skid, but, uh, cause I forgot, but, uh, what, what did you do with your 10 advancement points that you were doing? Oh, I... So I bought another talent, which I think cost me nine of those points. Yes, that's right. Uh, so I had the advisor communicate skill. I augmented it with the advisor understand skill. So I can help others. Uh, to, I can w give them a reroll on either an understand test or, or, or a communications test now. Very good. The cleric of the party buffing yeah. everyone. He's been learning like he's just been absorbing like all the knowledge of the, the, the universe that's available to him in the, in the intervening 10 years just trying to be uh, be as make his make himself as useful as possible in this new environment. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, and, and so I, I will ask now Pharos. Pharos, what did you do with your 10 advancement points? I'll spend them on most this the discipline skill my focus in body control I think over this time, it's just maybe tried to become more skilled and disciplined, both not just in, in the face dancing, but has, has had to live with the rigorous um, discipline of the head of a household and, and to juggle various factions now that the, he's speaking with the voice of the Tleelax in the court of the Bene Gesserit. It's more important than ever that you don't slip. Right. Um, because I, I also think that like the the Tleelax may not are this is a this is a marriage of convenience because I did kind of go against some sort of internal conditioning when I spared the life of Delessa uh Houdan in our in our last uh little session. PvP so. <laughs> <laughs> Right. A PvP is always fun uh, until two characters are dead and uh, the game master's like, What do I do now? <laughs> um, so and because of that I think I am a little attached to to Delessa and a and the books talk about the um, the, Bene, the or the uh, Bene Gesserit imprinting on on mm. people and and c cultivating a sense of admiration and love in them and I think some of that that uh, soft skilled Bene Gesserit magic has worked on Pharaohs to some extent and there is like a an unerotic form of love that he feels for Delessa. You are yeah, all my like, children <clears throat> and I am your imitation. reverend mother. It's like imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Like you take that to an extremely literal extent. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And if anybody uh, you wants You wear me around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought I'd look good in this dress and also your face. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, can I be your mirror for the day? <laughs> just turn into you. <laughs> not, not in like a Buffalo Bill way, but just Not like, weird at all. A, a chill, yeah. cool no. way. Look, if, if there's anybody... one thing we can say about Dune, it's not weird at all. Yeah, <laughs> and if there's I, one I word, feel if the there's, air quotes. <laughs> if there's one word I want everybody to remember that sums, sums up this game, it's unerotic. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am now going to set a scene. Um, uh, Delessa uh, Houdin, ne Tyloris, um, you uh, are finishing up your meditations uh, in your, um, I'm afraid, you know, it is now a simple cell. A, a simple, uh, a reverend mother uh, will eventually be given a, a greater station, maybe somewhere out in the universe, but you have just achieved your reverend motherhood. You have just gone through the agony. You have been uh, recovering uh, and um, getting in touch with your other memory through meditation. Uh, and you are in your simple cell. And uh, oh boy, nothing could drive home how much your fortunes have changed than this, this tiny little room they have you in. But because you do have a little bit higher status than some of the sisters, it does have a window that looks out on the gardens uh, here at the uh, complex on Wallach 9, and there is a knock at your door. 
You may enter. Um, and another reverend mother uh, sticks her head in, and this is Willa. Uh, Willa. Uh, Gardan. Moseham. Willa Gardan Moseham. Uh, and she says, uh, Delessa, have you finished your meditation? Is a meditation ever fully finished? I ask you, Willa. She laughs ruefully. A <laughs> uh, little bit of meditation humor between sisters. <laughs> um, I see that you have, uh, you have ventured far in your seeking. You have brought back wisdom. I thank have you for your observation. Have you chosen your new names yet? Because a reverend mother has three names, which is why she is called Willa Gardan Moseham. Jared, are you going to put me on the spot like this? <laughs> well, perhaps Delessa has not chosen her, her new names yet. Delessa has, yeah. has not chosen her new names yet. Mm, you know, Kareem Abdul Jabbar had like months. Yeah. Kareem <laughs> Abdul Jabbar, uh, actually, he did it in one moment. They, he didn't have a name, and they were like, Who are you? Why are you so good at basketball? And he just. <laughs> um, so. Uh, uh, I ask her, um, Willa. Yes. When you chose your names, what gave you inspiration? Well, I I, I derived them from uh, the names of those sisters whose other memory I shared. In kind many of... ways, once we have accessed the other memory, we are no longer uh, one sister. We are many. Interesting. Is this tradition, or may I choose names? That I think reflect this new amalgamation. It is of tradition. Us. It is tradition. Do not bulk tradition as I know you are wont to do, Delessa. Choose names that derive from the other memory that you share. This is the way. This is the Bene Gesserit way. But I digress. I, I have come for a reason. There is someone here to see you. A guest? Here? Yes. Someone who has had past dealings with you and wishes to speak to you uh, about an errand that may aid the Bene Gesserit. If it is in service of the Sisterhood, I am game AF. <laughs> yes. <laughs> AF. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have shown your guest to the gardens. Thank you, Gardan. <laughs> to the gardens. <laughs> Thank you for noticing uh, how my name. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> the Reverend Mother Doubt Fire. Fire. <laughs> uh, uh, look, uh, I improvise, and sometimes that means improvising names. Here we go. And that means um, stalling before I have to make up mine. Yeah, no, it's so... Uh, In this so, world, AF means as Fremen, right? Yes, yes. as, as, as the Fremen, Fremen do. Yeah, yeah right? That's I'm right. ready as okay. Fremen. Yeah. Um, when you arrive uh, in the, or I, I, are you going to the garden, or are you maybe collecting someone to go with you? You can certainly do that, or you can uh, you can not go to the garden, and we can have a weird adventure where you venture <laughs> other places in the complex. Um, as Delessa meditates on this name, uh, what name to choose to give away the name given to her by the mother that she thought loved her and turned out. W was super evil um, in service only of her own pursuits. She she uh, is excited to shed this last vestige of, of her former self. Um, she wears very simple robes now mm -hmm. because she's no longer a duchess. In fact, if you're watching the video, no more epaulets. Um, it's also warm in here. <laughs> Becca just, if you're only listening, Becca just put on a really old terry cloth robe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt me. That is my uniform when not on stream. Yeah, it looks just like the one Brad Pitt wore in Fight Club. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I bought it at an auction. <laughs> um. <laughs> what a great piece of memorabilia. What a comfortable piece of memorabilia. <laughs> oh, man. Tyler is Durden. Um, Dresden, Tyloris, wow. Tyloris, Dr- oh, <laughs> They God. were the same person. They were the same person. <laughs> it's there. The connection works. It's 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 intended. Okay. Um, uh, I do so go to the garden alone. You do go to the garden. Uh, wearing you go simple alone. Ropes. Yeah. You go alone, but before you uh, find this guest, you find someone else, and I think it's going to be uh, Aurelius de Grom. Aurelius, perhaps you were, uh, this is how functionary your function has become. You're now the guy that like shows guests where they, they can go and stand and, and things like that. You're really a glorified butler in some ways now. Um, and you are standing with the guest who happens to be a character uh, all of you may remember. Uh, it's twilight in the garden, and his face is mostly in shadow as he stands at the edge of a fountain, but you are looking at Fenton Quill. Fenton Quill, uh, who was uh, formerly a Harkonnen dignitary. Oh, right. That's right. And uh, you will also remember that Delessa and Fenton did not like each other very much. So, um, as you're standing about to, uh, give him an audience with Delessa, uh, is there anything you want to say to prepare him or anything you want? I don't want to lead you, uh, uh, Skid was, does Aurelius, how does he carry out his duty here? I think, well, for one thing, I want to explain his appearance has changed a little bit too. Very good. Uh, his long black hair, he's cut it short and dyed it in a very uh, fetching kind of gray dishwater blonde um it is it's to reflect the, his age and his change and his person and the fact that i was getting wig headaches by the end of uh, each of these episodes <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah he's so he i think he was always sort of disdainful about the H- harkonnens anyway like he, he talked about how they that our house was like a buffer against the cruelty and excesses of the Harkonnens but now that any any ill feelings he had about them is surpassed by his need for vendetta against the Atreides yeah so I think he welcomes this person he is certainly I think he's distrustful of basically everyone now but he welcomes them and sees them as the enemy of his enemy and so he greets him with his uh his uh, protocol skills he he makes them feel quite at home and doesn't betray uh any uh, even even a hint of his ill ease at uh, a member of of his old oppressors of being here Fenton Quill uh looks you over as you stand uh, you know at attention like doing your duty and says they have you answering the door here? Yes. But any duty and service to the Order is an honor, of course. Ah, yes. An honor to uh, serve the great Bene Gesserit Order. What an honor. Your she Duchess is. has chosen the honor. She has. She has achieved her full destiny. She has, she has achieved the highest... Or is about to? Are you Reverend Mother yet, or you're she about is. to be one? She is. She has achieved the highest, uh, the highest rank in the order. We are all very proud. Mm. Yes, not a lot to be proud about these days, if you come from a bloodline like mine. I see. Uh, Delessa enters uh, this this glade, where the beautiful babbling fountain. Uh, uh, tinkles in the background uh, and uh, the suns are going down so it is it's getting quite dark Duchess ah. been a while since you've heard that title I I'm assuming it is one I no longer answer to Fenton Quill hmm so you remember me if I sound and look different, it's because many years have passed. Not because someone <laughs> different is. No, somehow. Portraying me. Everything about you is 
impeccably accurate. Hmm. Yes. Thank you for meeting me. I had to speak directly to you. Yes. Well, say what you have come to say. Anything you could say to me, you may say in the presence of my mentant, or rather that of the Bene Gesserit, Aurelius de Gram. Of course, you are reacquainted, I see. Yes, yes, we have become reacquainted. Uh, he has been officious and efficient in the role given him. Yeah, and I, I realize this completely. I, I realize this completely faded into the background. He's just like trying to make himself look as small and inconspicuous as possible. Delessa, um, I would first ask you a question. Are you happy here? Does this change in fortunes please you? I am much taken aback that one such of yourself would inquire as to my happiness. Upon our last meeting, you saw me leave my opera house as you were tempted to apprehend me with a hostage. Of course, I have changed much in temperament since then. Yes, but... Uh... In the uh, days that followed, I saw you work miracles. Dresden Tyloris was returned to life. That was quite a feat. Though, of course, I cannot take all credit. Yes, thank you for your acknowledgement of these, these events. I do believe the Harkonnens uh, were grateful for what we were able to do. Mm, the Harkonnens were very grateful. Yes. And you even uh, found and dealt with an abomination in our midst. That was quite a feat as well. Uh, and although I uh, was not privy to the entire situation, I have since studied it. And I understand that this destiny that you've been given was not the one you once had. Our destiny has been usurped by this so-called Messiah. Our house has been decimated. Your liege lords have been destroyed, wiped off the face of the galaxy. That does not anger you. Perhaps Bene Gesserit sisters do not feel anger unless they want to. Bene Gesserit know that things happen as they do. All we can do is affect what is to come, not what has been. Well, I'm here offering you an opportunity to affect what is to come. I represent certain parties who would like to see the Atreides excesses curtailed. How would you like to have a new fiefdom? A place that House Houdin or House Tyloris, whatever you'd like to call yourselves, could call their own. A place with people who would work for you. Your fortunes would be reversed. You could rebuild your opera house. Of course, I could not accept such a freedom on my own behalf as my meditation in the ways of the Bene Gesserit has transcended me above such desires. But for those in my care, and for those who believe that I have a greater purpose to serve on the Bene Gesserit's behalf, I certainly would not say no to such an opportunity. Very good. And I can assure you that your fellow sisters have approved of an alliance between what remains of the Harkonnen and your sisterhood. So. They know that I am offering an opportunity to you, and they know that it must be kept under the strictest and most dire secrecy. What if I told you, and he looks around carefully, and all he sees is buzzing insects, and his voice is kind of covered by the trickling of the fountain. And he says, what if I told you that a planet has been discovered with the near exact ecological conditions of Arrakis? 
with a little nudging from certain Ixian innovations, it is Arrakis, or it will be. It's just missing one thing. A sandworm. <laughs> if we can get a sandworm off of Arrakis, we can create our own spice. We will break the Atreides stranglehold on the galaxy, and the Landsrad and the Imperium will rise again, and with it, House Harkonnen and House Houdin. I believe the Imperium, the universe, is made stronger by balance. And if it is my purpose to help such balance to be achieved, so be it. I will attempt to bring such a sandworm. <laughs> they don't be. fly well, you do know. They do not have wings, no. It will not be easy. But I have been assured by my employers that you and the team that you choose are the only individuals who can achieve this end. I think you know the team that I will choose, those that help to unfold the events of which you've already spoken. The miracle workers. Yes, like the very invisible one standing against the wall right behind you. <laughs> he kind of glances at Aurelius and says, Very good. He's like standing behind a pillar like Buster Bluth. <laughs> <laughs> I have some candy for you in my bag, Aurelius. <laughs> you must make haste to Arrakis immediately and begin this mission. Time is of the essence. Very soon, the planet will be made ready, and we need to break the Atreides' stranglehold and end their relentless jihad before it does lasting damage on what remains of the Imperium. End the jihad? I thought our purpose was simply to create competition. Competition will end the jihad. Excellent. I will you may refer to me by my new name. <gasps> I turn to Aurelius as I say this, and I take the hood off. Hominy Seraglio Tyloris. <laughs> Hominy Seraglio Tyloris. Named after those sisters which gave me my other memory. And also a cool play I saw once. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance for the first time, Reverend Mother. I will let my employers know that you have uh, accepted our offer. I will be in touch when you have touched down on Arrakis. <laughs> and he Excellent. walks uh, out of the garden. Aurelius, it yes. seems our fortunes have changed. It seems so. The prospect, and he's like, his heart is like racing right now at the thought of something like that. This is like a, a miracle for someone looking to destroy House Atreides. This is like a perfect thing. But, he, uh, but this is highly unlikely. I would, I would urge caution and due diligence before yeah. we commit fully. You think we cannot capture a sandworm in order to create an entire new form of control for the Bene Gesserit itself? This would be a miracle, my lady, but in my experience, miracles are rare and yeah. Yes, but created as the fruit of passions such as ours, are they not? Yes, well, perhaps. I only have my doubts about the messenger himself. I would wish to look into the methods that he suggests 
to see if this is in fact possible. If it is, this would behoove us to move on this plan as quickly as possible, of course. And once we have secured them, should it be possible, we'll have no more need for a Fenton Quill and can dispose of him at our leisure. Indeed, my lady. Ha 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 So let's bring the other players in. And um, I, you know, uh, you can talk as players or you can talk in, in character, but um, you have to travel to Arrakis to do this. Uh, uh, Aurelius is, is, is counseling that you learn more about how it would be possible. And so Fenton Quill is still in the complex, Aurelius. If anybody would like to question him further, uh, perhaps I ended the interview too, too soon. Um, you can go and you can find him, uh, corner him, uh, and, uh, and get more information out of him. Uh, or you can make your plans among yourselves. Um, uh, the Bene Gesserit give you full uh, freedom within their complex. Can I can I ask quickly out of character, just lore wise, for the yeah. real real Dune heads here? Yeah. What what is it that is what is the barrier between creating another environment for the sandworms to create like another source of spice? Is it is it the the difficulty of finding a planet just like a rat? Like, did the worms need? An environment exactly like Arrakis, and they just can't find one. I believe mm-hmm. so, and I'll ask my fellow Dune head, uh, Ross Bryant. That that that's that's I correct, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah, the sandworms are totally aquaphobic, so water is poison to them. So uh, they need a completely arid um, landscape in order to thrive and grow. But they have a life cycle that they, they go through, sort of a like a tadpole state. Um, Ooh, let's 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 slow the brakes because I think not all of this would actually be known necessarily to, to characters. Yeah, so right. perhaps it's something your characters must kind of look into if you'd but, like to uh, so, learn more about it. So while uh, book one uh, br- can, briefly, oh sorry, no, go ahead. It hasn't even mentioned yet. Uh, just like a little tidbit um, that uh, from the planetologist as he's dying because he's a he in the book and a she in the new movie um, mentions something about bubbles underground created by the sandworms and that's how spice is made but it's not actually explicitly said it's just hinted at so we don't even know that sandworms make spice uh, in book one yeah yeah is that widely is that understood at all by anyone I mean the well, the Fremen know it, right? Who would understand it? I mean, thinking in universe, you can probably think of people who might who might know about this, and they might be someone that you definitely need to go and talk to. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe a certain a Fremen, Fremen in our, asset in our employ. yeah, yeah, uh, like a contact. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, let, let's have the party get together and uh, let's, let's have you kind of, uh, you can discuss your plans or you can leap into action and head to Arrakis and then figure it out. So are what we just cutting those? to a scene where the four of us are together just discussing? <laughs> yeah, let's set that. Um, you're in uh, a place where the Bene Gesserit, um, they eat uh, and it's like, you know, uh, humble wooden tables. Uh, but everything is uh, perfectly uh, clean, perfectly lacquered and shining. Uh, but it, it's it's humbled, and 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 there are interesting screens covering uh, the you know the outer doors with like interestingly uh, crafted lattices, uh, throwing strange shadows into the room. And you have all met to discuss how you might go about this. With all due respect, my lady, and she still refers to Duchess as my lady, as more of like a pet name than by title. Um, how is it that you know that Fenton Quill isn't just trying to send you to your certain death? I suppose there's no way of knowing such things. This is why more information is required. And I ask each of you to choose for yourselves Weather adventure is what you seek. We are very comfortable here on Wallach 9. This is not a choice we have to make. It's true. Well, I'm sure it is very comfortable for you, my lady. And uh, here I think if you'd see what maybe something that you've grown used to but is still a little uncanny is that around here 
Pharos doesn't put on his guise and is in his sort of neutral look. And you are looking at a corrugated gray face with little sharp teeth, small, widely set eyes. Just a, a, a stra- a, this does not look human, what you are looking at. Um, Jared, did you ever play Star Frontiers? Um, no, I didn't. There's a race in Star Frontiers, which was like the sci-fi follow-up to Dungeons and Dragons. And one of the races in there was the Dralocyte, and they sound almost exactly like what you're describing. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Deep uh, cuts. Yeah, I'm one of those. <laughs> and um, it's like, I'm sure it is very comfortable for you, my lady. I'm sure you do not feel the sideways glances of your sisters as I move through your hallways. And they're finely pitched tones of voice as I know they are capable of cultivating whenever they choose to speak to me or speak within my earshot. But I myself would perhaps feel something more comfortable. To go back somewhere where I might be able to be of some use to you and to the sisterhood who has been so gracious to provide me so comfortable a home. Yes, Pharos. I understand you've ceased wearing faces, as many here perceive this version of you, whether or not you wear another face. I see. It it causes you great pain. Yet another reason why we should consider this opportunity. I would just like to remind everyone that while there are motivations for this, We have encountered these worms before. And how do we even know that what they're asking us to do is possible? Could I I do some kind of understand check to see if I've, in the intervening 10 years, if I've been able to learn enough to be able to have a shot at knowing this myself without checking with anyone? I think that that's possible. It sounds like an understand check. Yeah, uh, and because we're just kind of, uh, we've got our mentat here who remembers everything that he reads, uh, in theory. Um, I think that you should uh, do it at difficulty zero. Let's just see kind of what what you can dig up. Okay, and you know what? I'll even give you a point of threat for another dot. Wow. Okay, I'll take it. Um, so I am going. Yeah, this is an understand, and I will use. Uh, cult- cultural studies is cultural studies as a focus that, that uh, cultural studies works indeed it does okay and yeah my my justice I will bring down house Atreides like this is the key to doing exactly this so. oh yes yeah the drive works perfectly okay so this is 15 or less uh, I got three successes three successes so you've earned three momentum for your uh for your uh, pool and uh, right now this is sort of a gather information type check so you can ask me additional questions but what was your first question the first thing you were trying to find out and like how possible how is this possible yeah basically what i asked you out of character earlier yeah um so th- this uh this is theoretically possible um the main complication uh this is what you're getting for free the main complication is figuring out how to get a worm into a starship there would need to be some way of steering it or herding it into and when we say starship we don't mean um the hayliners of the guild um there are smaller ships that then go up and meet guild hayliners and then travel faster than light, you know, to those far off locations that the guild navigators navigate to, you would need to get them into some very large frigate because the worms are incredibly large. How do you get a worm to go into the cargo bay of a frigate? And uh, we're gonna uh, just go to, to a break in a minute, but you have, you have three momentum here and you can ask as many other questions as you'd like. Uh, by just spending momentum, or you can just save that to your pool. Okay, I'm gonna spend a couple momentum here to just get a little more information. Spend two, and of and of course, Aurelius, you are sharing this with the rest and of the I'm, party. Yeah, I'm sharing this, and I, he prefaces it by saying, 
Yes, our life here is comfortable, but there is no comfort for one such as me. The rage that burns within me at the injustice that we have suffered uh, will give me no rest until House Atreides is ground to dust. And then, yeah, he tells like that. And then, okay, so what is there? Is it is it possible? Okay, is it possible that there could have found that someone could have found reasonably possible that someone could have found a habitat similar enough to Arrakis that we, you know, we could even bother with this. And two, uh, is it possible to wrangle a smaller worm to make it easier on us? Um, okay, yeah. So uh, that's let's we'll call that two questions. So I'm taking away two of your momentum, which I believe leaves you with one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, the uh, questions are answered thusly: um, uh, Is it possible to find a planet like that? Uh, the galaxy has so many different planets that it is feasible that it that it could have been done. What you suddenly realize, Aurelius, is who is exploring and finding new planets. That's not something that the Imperium does as just a matter of business. So whoever has found this environment uh, is specifically placed in a way that they would be able to do that. Um, kind of maybe gives you some insight on who is behind this plan or setting you up for this. Um, the uh, second question is, can you find a smaller worm? Certainly you can, but how do you summon a specifically sized worm or right. find a specifically sized worm? But there are worms that are quite small. There are worms yes. that are quite small and not skyscraper sized. So, I think trying. there's a mechanic where if we don't like the information you gave us, we get our momentum back. And I think, <laughs> is there a baby worm? Yes. Falls under that category. Uh, <laughs> All I know okay. is someone's trying to screw over Big Spice. Well, yeah. then, uh, <laughs> just because I'm a nice guy, I'm giving you that point of momentum back. Uh, yes. And uh, because you're going to lose a point when we end this scene anyway, and we have to end this scene for now so we can take a short break. We'll be right back with more Dune. And when we come back, we're going all the way to Arrakis, the place you always knew we were headed. Book two of Inherit the Sand yeah. will return. Welcome back to the great empire of Paul Atreides. Uh, he's wiped out the Harkonnen, uh, and uh, his uh, Fremen warriors have spread across the galaxy, uh, preaching his gospel uh, and cutting down any who oppose him. Speaking of those who oppose him, uh, in a small dining room in Wallach 9, four individuals are sitting and planning uh a caper that might be impossible. Um, and so um, I, I will allow you to continue to discuss or we can cut to when you decide to head to Arrakis uh, and and try, in fact, you know what? Let's just do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's just cut straight to it. Um, you are headed on a guild hayliner to Arrakis uh, and you're going to make a planet fall very soon. Um, you need to let me know if there's anything you'd like to do in preparation beforehand. I will state that I let all of these characters change their assets if they liked, because um, 10 years have passed, so it would make sense that they would have different accoutrements. Uh, so they have uh, changed their assets somewhat. You'll see that uh, assets don't normally change, uh, except for w when we do something like this, where we start like a new storyline. Um, and uh, is there anything else that anybody would like to do? Uh, it, the thing about a trip on a guild hayliner is that it doesn't take very long. You, the, the thing that takes the longest is you know boarding uh, the ship uh, outside of the, the strange kind of like monastery uh, on Wallach Nine, uh, boarding a ship that uh, is, then travels and flies up out of the atmosphere, through the burning atmosphere, to uh, this long cylindrical dark shape that hangs over the planet. Uh, it's, it's almost like a, a one solid object. It, you don't see components to like the Guild Hayliner ship. It looks like just like one solid uh, uh, shape in space, uh, but a tiny uh, cargo uh, door uh, opens and your ship 
uh, diminutive compared to this enormous hayliner, uh, along with other ships from Wallach 9, uh, docks inside of it, and you are to never leave your ship. You are to never to go out and explore among the hayliner. Uh, instead, the hayliner then folds space when it's ready, many hours later when the preparations are complete, uh, and you find yourself hanging over Arrakis. But in all that time, you do have time for any prep. Does anybody have a question or any prep that they want to do before you arrive planet side on Arrakis. I do have a question. Great. Do we, so I had a still suit uh, previously as an asset. Um, we, were, we will all need still suits for this mission, I'm assuming, yes? Mm, yes, well, maybe. Uh, depends on who is heading out into the desert. I just didn't know if I should switch that one out or, should I, or if I should keep it. Um, if you should switch that asset, um, yeah. it sounds like something. I don't like think I, you, I don't. I think I. I think I still should hold on to it. I think you should. It sounds like something you might need. The worms okay. are out there where you need steel suits, okay. so I would keep it. Yeah, and probably it might be a good idea to figure out how to get your hands on more. Um, does anybody else have a, a, pre a preparation their character undergoes or? Uh, want to talk about their character's mindset heading into this? I did. I switched out one because I obviously don't have my ornithopter anymore. Uh, so instead, I have I got some Sappho juice, which I don't think is really defined uh, game terms like what it mechanically what it provides. But I have some of that, and uh, I will. I like saved my still suit, a Fremen still suit, as kind of a souvenir. A reminder of what went down on Arrakis. So he breaks that out. And he also has the latest issue of uh, Ornithopter Monthly that he just carries with him to read on the High Line. Right. Uh, just some real yeah. cherry Ornithopters. <laughs> yeah. He's dreaming. One day he's going to get another Ornithopter. Some sick like Owen effects. Wilson <laughs> in uh, <laughs> what's the Disney show. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, uh, Loki. Uh, yeah, Loki. Why did yeah. that take me so long? Right. <laughs> Yes, um, there are no computers a, in the Dune yeah. universe, but there are magazines. There are lots and lots of magazines. <laughs> Trade Sorry, publication I survives. Um, <laughs> no, I, one question slash discussion is yes. maybe with the whole group, because we know, I don't know that we ever just definitively nailed this down. Is Dresden Tyloris still alive in the, in the fiction that the household has created? Oh, is certainly. he still Head of, is he still out there? This so is he's, a great question. That's my husband. Let, let, let so me great. answer. Let me Dresden answer Tyloris this question. Is, is still is still lord in exile of House Tyloris. For, uh, I would I would slow down for a second because uh, that certainly could be true. Dresden Tyloris could still be alive. He would be automatically branded as a uh, criminal right. and uh, death on sight, uh, according to the Fedakin death commandos of Muad'Dib. <laughs> Any Harkonnen or their vassal, uh, their vassal um, followers are are considered anathema, and so uh, probably that's not the disguise you want to go with. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I figured. <laughs> just, just so um, I think uh, just a like if you glance up at Pharos, that that the face that that you've come to know is is gone, reorienting into, uh, I think a, um, he just goes far back into his memory. And it's and because it's the product of a, of a decades old memory, it's not quite what you remember because it's maybe not the perfect memory retrieval, but it's, uh, it's basically, uh, you're looking at the face of the, um, of the naive of the siege that you were in when, um, when, uh, the battle between the abomination went down and 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 instead of the face of pharos you're looking at the face of an elderly uh fremen man uh -huh. and actually uh, aurelius could advise you to make your appearance more perfectly great accurate with his mind palace so well let's see yeah, we've started eyes are a little bit closer together not quite that shade of blue we've started a new scene uh and so you have one momentum 
Um, would you like to see how perfect you can make this disguise? Um, yes. Now, because you have the face dancing power, it means I can't level any additional difficulty against you when you are trying to uh, change your appearance. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Um, uh, that's sort of how we adapted it. It's kind of an NPC talent to a player. So um, you have one momentum because it's a new scene. We, lo we lose a momentum, but you can roll. And I'm going to go ahead and say, because you've given plenty of time to prepare and because we we have our friend Aurelius assisting you. We're going to make it a difficulty zero uh, challenge. Uh, and let's just see how perfectly you match uh, the appearance. All right, let's see. What are you going to use? Well, uh, obviously the uh, the discipline of body control. Yes. Um, and as far as the drive, I think um, this is this is truth. Belief is a lever. Yes, very good. That makes complete yeah. sense. So good. you can use determination uh, if if you want. Um, you can use uh, if you if you wish to. I, I probably wouldn't use it on this roll since it's only difficulty zero. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and let's um, let's roll and see how we do. All right. Ooh, I rolled a. Uh a five and a 13, which is both of those are successes. And one of them goes under my focus. So that's okay. three successes, three successes. And you uh, had a difficulty zero roll. So you have earned three momentum. Nice. Um, bringing a momentum of the party up to four. Um, it can never go above six, but you've got it. You've got it up there now. Um, is there any additional trait you'd like to give yourself? Uh, you could spend, uh, I believe it's uh, one of these momentum to uh, create a trait for yourself um, with it for this disguise. Yeah, let's let's um, let's say that this this I want to create the trait of um, plausible of. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, uh, like or perfect, like uh, like perfect perfectly likeness. aged. Yeah. Like and accurately the, aged, the, right? This the is like the, right when you when you see like a criminal at large in a uh, like in a like in a when the FBI puts out a um like this is what this criminal would look like aged ten years. Yeah, the we FBI have, program. We have act. We have accurately done that to the face of this guy we saw a decade ago. <laughs> Great. So you have three momentum um, as uh, you um, hear through. Uh, and, and, and again, it's like a different kind of like uh, lights go on outside of your uh, your starship uh, that let you know that you are about to have your ship released out into space above Arrakis. Um, and um, I assume uh, since none of you are uh, proficient, perhaps in uh, kind of driving a starship that you have. Uh, some sort of adjunct from the Bene Gesserit order who is uh, who's flying this starship for you and uh, soon you feel the slight uh, kind of um, uh, interference that comes uh, the slight bump that you feel from when you're entering an atmosphere um, and soon uh, through the uh, through the portholes of your starship a bright shining sunlight crashes in uh, and the whole place becomes uh, so bright it's hard to see as the ship slowly moves down toward the spaceport outside of Arakeen uh, and now you can look out the portholes of your ship and you can see that there are uh, many uh, small figures moving about in this spaceport it's bustling with activity and on the horizon is the Atreides government complex uh, and it looks very different here than when you were last in Arrakis. They have built a structure that looks to be like a mile high. It is enormous. It, it dwarfs everything else in the landscape. The Atreides have uh, made their mark here. Uh, Paul Atreides has built this massive structure here uh, as uh, an ode to his own power. Uh, and now everyone feels dwarfed by the presence of the Atreides here. Uh, but for now, uh, your ship uh, finally uh, touches down perfect uh, accuracy and comfort onto the spaceport tarmac, uh, and the doors open, and you can uh, move out into Arakeen. Uh, let me know uh, how you would like to do that. 
just quickly, I know you already gave the opportunity. I was fighting with my character sheet. Um, yes, no problem. I, I did change out a couple of my assets as well because okay. I, I threw my Gamjabar, so no more Gamjabar. Um, and I took instead a Cybus Hood? Cybus Hood? Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> It, it, it perfectly, no sensory device at all could ever see out of or into a cybus hood. It, <laughs> it, it, it's perfect darkness. Oh, so I can't see cool. out? Um, well, it would, it, no, you can see out, I, I, forgive me. Um, but no one could ever f- figure out your identity by looking, you know, even with like special devices to try to peer into the cybus hood. No one would ever be able to do that. Right. Cool. It says as an asset, it enables its user to easily escape notice and blend into crowds. So I guess people just wear them a lot. They're a po- popular fashion statement. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> you know, that's interesting. I remember the Cybus Hood from uh, from the novels, and uh, it's something that they sort of uh, use to hide identity. So I guess certain, certain nobility, certain... Uh, people sometimes want to hide their identity, uh, blend it's in like the crowd. It's like having tinted windows on your SUV. Yes. Or something. yes. Mm. Um, Got a tinted face hole. Right. <laughs> so, you know, um, uh, the people that would see you would glance away. They would know that you are uh, maintaining a cloak of privacy. Um, and so uh, are you donning that Cybus hood as you uh, move out into the spaceport? I think so, because uh, for reasons previously stated, the Duchess de Lessa Houdin is not welcome on this planet, but uh, the Reverend Mother uh, Pomini, she she's probably fine, but not her face. <laughs> right. You know, the Duchess de Lessa would not be welcome here, not at all. Um, yeah, this is, this is extraordinarily dangerous for us yeah. to be going back here at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. So we should uh, take absolutely. every little. So I'm <laughs> wondering along the same lines, do I want, I, I'm trying to s- decide between a pulse sword and a jubba cloak. Um, well, I'll tell you what, right now the jubba cloak is something you could kind of wrap around yourself to kind of hide yourself a little bit. Um, I'm going to go with or, that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I'm not sure having a pulse sword when I already have a plus one Chris knife is a. Right. Going to help me out. All right. Yeah. Job a cloak it is. Nice. And just FYI, uh, the final thing that I took was a truth sayer drug. Uh, right. And I I have every confidence that it will uh, it will be injected into someone at some point very soon. <laughs> Great. Um, um, so um, uh, as you exit your ship. Um, we see that this uh, this arriving dignitary or arriving maybe maybe they can tell that it is a uh, one of the sisterhood uh, who do maintain some presence still on Arrakis, uh, but uh, your Cybus hood hides your identity. No one would be able to even determine it using uh, surveillance tools or espionage assets, um, and you are followed by uh, your Mentat and two. Uh, to Fremen, um, one of whom uh, is an elder uh, Fremen uh, that uh, that you encountered uh, on a previous uh, previous uh, adventure here on Arrakis. Um, the heat hits you. Um, it's like when you're in Texas in the summertime and it's 110 degrees. The heat is like something you're moving through. It almost seems to have like a physical presence. Um, it's hard to... Uh, your Cybus Hood does have the added effect and, and so does your Jubba Cloak of kind of blocking out some of that light because I can tell you that the light is so bright here that when you look at other ships, the glint off of them temporarily blinds you. There's a lot of J.J. Abrams lens flare uh, all around you. <laughs> and the first thing you become aware of <clears throat> is that the spaceport uh, is filled with Fremen warriors. They are shouting orders. They are manning every gate and every way in and out of the spaceport. They are going through cargo and tearing stuff out of people's cases. Um, The Jihad is strongest here on Arrakis uh, and uh, Muad'Dib's Fremen are everywhere policing the spaceport. And it appears that before you can exit the spaceport into Arakeen, you will have to talk to uh, what is essentially customs here on Arrakis now. In fact, you find yourselves moving along with the hustle and bustle of the spaceport, and you seem to be getting closer and closer to some heavily armed Fremen. They are not only carrying uh, swords and the traditional weapons of Fremen, some of them have Mala pistols uh, on on their uh, bodies as well. 
uh, and uh, they are standing and inspecting everybody that comes through. Um, let me know what you'd like to do as you approach them uh, to exit the spaceport. Hmm. Or perhaps you'd like to stay in the spaceport a while and find some things out here. You certainly can. This is only one part of Arrakis that you can explore. I'm sorry, er Arakeen that you can explore. The city of Arakeen. Hmm. I, I mean, it seems like probably on this Haylander, I know you give us the opportunity to discuss this sort of stuff, but have we concocted a cover story to get us through? Um, yeah. We're newlyweds on the way to Earth Capital. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, tell me. I mean, uh, you know, it, I know it can be tricky to come up with a uh, come up with a cover story on the fly, but that is what roles are for. If your characters, <laughs> if your character is good at that sort of thing, maybe you could, you know, make a role for your cover story right now and generate momentum. But then, of course, there would be a role to try to tell the cover story to the guards. Great. And that I'll would be important. I think I'll try this considering I'm, unless. Go uh, for it. Uh, just just yeah. a metagame brainstorm what we discussed as a group. Um, wedding party? Or or uh, <laughs> Benny Gesserit dignitaries headed to government offices or something like that? That sounds very, very much in the zone. Um, yeah. If, if we want to clarify, I can try to roll an understand deductive reasoning focus with my um, truth. Mm. Um, um Maybe we combine work Drive. and pleasure, and it's like Benny Gesserit business, also honeymoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> a classic player move where they're like, "It's uh, I'm all things, and it is all things." Um, yeah. We're here no, for you this honeymoons and on Arrakis. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Terrible uh, place for professional a sandworm riders. Competitive. Yeah, competitive. It's it's it's, yeah, it's, it's the, the big season. It's the Imperium's version of motocross. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was, I was going to ask: Is there anything like a hodge? Like, is there anything like a pilgrimage where, like, for religious reasons, like someone would take, make their journey to Arrakis? So it, it, it's only been uh, five years since uh, the Atreides took over. Uh, uh, you know, the, the known uh, galaxy and ascended to power, but already people are starting to uh, take pilgrimages here to pay their respects. Uh, uh, it, this is a religious movement and it has, it, it's growing not just at the point of a sword, but it is growing through proselytization. Uh, pro, uh, can I say that word? Proselytization. Yeah. Uh, meaning that there are all kinds of new converts and they do come here to, to worship Paul. Um, he is the Messiah. That uh, Mua Dweeb? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I knew that guy in high school. That is you're, the new hashtag. Mm-hmm. Moa so, Dweeb. Um, so certainly a pilgrimage is a cover story that you could use. Yeah. I think I'm, so. Yeah, I think at least for solid. Corin being a Fremen, she would definitely... That that checks. Yeah. Great. I mean, then I don't have to... Do you want to? You have you have three momentum. Do you want to? Do you want to roll to like make the cover story perfect? Yes, I'll allow it. Um, yes, I do. Do use all the um, the things that you said earlier. What was your truth? The truth uh, and drive? my understand deductive reasoning. Yes, and um, I'm gonna say that because it's it, it's a little t- tougher to make like a, a perfect cover story. So this is a difficulty one roll you need to get at least one of your d20s has to be a success so um just to reiterate for uh viewers listeners who may not know uh our friend uh is rolling uh our friend ross bryant uh, as pharos is rolling two d20s it's the 2d20 system and he's trying to get both or at least one of them because he needs one success under the target number formed by adding his skill of uh his skill of uh, uh understand me. which understand is seven to his drive of truth. Okay, Which is also seven. It. So I'm roll, trying to roll at or under 14. And uh, I think I'll, can I buy one more dice with one of those momentum? You certainly can. Great. And I can also, with my advisor skill, if one fails, I can, ha- I can you can re-roll it with my skill. Amazing. So here comes okay. my three rolls. And to be okay. clear, before you before you give us the result, this is just how the, the the cover story you guys have concocted. You are not yet telling it to these guards. You have just created a perfect cover for yourself. Maybe let's see how well our friend Pharos rolled. I rolled an eight, a two, and a twelve. 
So oh. those are all successes, but Ooh. the two, which is under my uh, skill, which is the focus and deductive reasoning, counts as two successes. So that's a total of four successes. Four successes. You only needed one, so you generated three momentum for yourself. Nice um, work. And what you could do uh, with that is, you know how you gave yourself the trait of uh, perfect... Uh, Perfect. What, what did you call it? Plausible. Uh-huh. You could now give the, that trait to uh, other people here <gasps> if you'd like. Great. Um, yeah, that's precisely what I'd like to do. And yeah. I, um, and yeah, I think I'd like to. I think in particular, I'd like to give it to um, my duchess, um, and I'd like to give her the trait of. Um, s- Seemingly harmless. Mm. <laughs> Great. I'm gonna never I'm been gonna, called that before. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make. You know what? I'm just uh, uh, creating traits. Uh, uh, I think it's usually just one momentum uh, if you spend it immediately. So that cost you one momentum. You had five. You're down to four. Um, do you want to? I hate to say this, but uh, the going rate with Troy was two. Oh, it was two. Yeah, I think. I th- I just uh, be honest. I'm being I'm being easy and you're being honest. So two go away to give that to your duchess. You have three left. Um, it seems that the that the next most uh, um, uh, uh, sticking out is Aurelius. So I might give give them the same. Very yeah. good. Uh, seemingly harmless trait to uh, both mm-hmm. of uh, both the duchess, both uh, the Reverend Mother, I should say and uh, Aurelius de Grom, the Mentat. Um, and so- and I want to uh, say too, uh, quickly, that I, he's changed his mode of dress as well, like in the intervening years. Like he's not wearing his elaborate, like courtly robes anymore. He just wears like real simple, uh, like peasant cloak and garb, just very, very humble as- Just a burlap fits. sack and a <laughs> straw hat. Just a big old burlap tunic. No more robes on robes on robes? No, no layers of robes. The bottom robe was just this bare hair shirt tunic and that's all he wears. Mm-hmm. And it's um, like, aw. I think it's something like as, as crossing through being inspected, it's like Subah al my friend. Um, we, we bring these up off-worlders to see yeah. the holy sights of the Messiah and his father. Peace be upon him who is who rests now even in the sands of the desert. Yeah. Cover uh, and uh, you uh, are approaching uh, the Fremen guards and they are uh, stop business on in Arakeen and you begin to give your uh, mm-hmm. and that is when. Um, uh, you see their eyes go wide as they look at our friend Pharos. Oh, <laughs> um, because I am now going to spend two threat. Oh no! <laughs> and say that they know something about this particular Fremen elder, Ktef Delube. They know yeah. about Ktef Delube. Like they, you, Dad. You. Yes. Are you the Ktef? I am. Yes, Ktef Delube. Of uh, of the siege, not far from here. We never we never named it, but uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That is impossible. I am Ktef Delub. Died three years ago. Okay, that's why I spent the threat. <laughs> Thanks. And now of they... course, you know this is his son. Did. <laughs> right. <laughs> and now um, you see them start to uh, put their arms toward their swords and their knives and things like that. All right. I'm going to try to defuse this. Have you ever seen the Patty Duke show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you're going to need to defuse this. Now, um, I mean, okay. because your perfect cover story was perfect about a pilgrimage, um, I'm going to give you those benefits, you know, like, uh, maybe your difficulty and all those traits you created make the difficulty go way down. Uh, but I can tell you that right now they are, uh, amazed that you have somehow returned from the dead. Once again, how Sudan brings someone back from the dead. <laughs> right. I mean, let's, let's, okay. I, uh, I will try to, um, use my skill of communicate charm <laughs> with, uh, with, um, once again, that truth statement, belief is a lever. Yeah, all right, and they're saying, how can this be? Okay, here we go. How do I see your face again, Ktef Delube? 
Uh-oh. Wait, I forgot to tell you what the difficulty is. <laughs> the difficulty. Uh, <laughs> so, I, so I don't have to. So I can re-roll that one I just rolled. Maybe? Nope. Well, no, maybe no. you want to spend our last momentum on it. I definitely do. Uh, okay, I'm going to allow than that one. since I haven't. That I haven't set. I didn't set the difficulty. You rolled a little early, so I'm no going to allow a momentum spend still. Let me. Makes sense. Like, everything about your cover is perfect. I'm going to take it down to difficulty one. Great. Because you cool. created traits for both of your party. It's your cover that is your plausible My cover problem. that is blowing their minds right now. Amazing. Um, so uh, Can I do a momentum spend to pick up one more die and make it I three? I think that that's a good idea. Yeah, go Great. for it. Um, all right. So I rolled my one. That was a failure. So here comes and two more. And you can re-roll that too with my advisor. So. So, okay. I, I will re-roll it right now. Great. Thanks, Aurelius. Yes. <laughs> oh, Aurelius, Aurelius is helping you. Uh, uh, you know, you know uh, he's, Aurelius is stepping in and kind of speaking for you a little bit. <laughs> the intervening years must have clouded your mind. This is not your friend. Uh, okay. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I already said I was. <laughs> oh, I mean, but, uh, uh, what I mean but, uh, to say but I, is that uh, tales of his death have been wildly exaggerated. I, well, here my he favorite is thing is flesh. when players have to lie and they're like, wait, I just said the opposite thing. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry. I, 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 that was I, a I, private joke, what I said earlier. What yes. I meant to say. Thanks to Aurelius' advising at this moment, I, I re-rolled my failure, t- and that was a three, which is under my, my drive. So that's, that's two successes. Then I proceeded to roll back to back ones. Oh, so, oh wow. Awesome. What? So that's, that's a total of six successes. Wow. So that's you, two a piece. So you, you've done. created five momentum because you only needed one. Uh, thanks to have, having created those traits mm-hmm. earlier for the rest of your party. Right. Um, and I'm going to tell you. Do not you know that you live in a time of miracles? Yes. When the prophet <laughs> walks among us? When the, when Muad'Dib, peace be upon him, sits upon his throne to spread his red hand over all the galaxy? Um, they fall to their knees yeah. uh, and they begin kind of like shouting uh, and, you know, uh, screaming uh, in uh, their Fremen uh, language. Uh, truly, this be a time of miracles. Uh, and uh, they, um, they let you go. They uh, stand aside and go... Welcome back, uh, revered father. (laughs) Walk in your homeland. Uh, Feel the heat of the desert on your face again. You are welcome here. Great. Uh, And I'll I'll go ahead and spend two momentum to create the trait in them, uh, trusting. Uh, That is a good idea. Um, So you have three momentum left. uh, And uh, because they are trusting, I can't pull any more of my... Uh, threat bullshit uh, and, uh, <laughs> and and try to uh, catch you up one more time. So you are free to leave awesome. the uh, spaceport complex and begin your mission in Arakeen. Never again, he shouts over his shoulder. Never again doubt the good works of Usul. Uh, which is also a bustle, uh, dust everywhere, uh, sand and grit in, in everything. That The second you walk into the city, grit is in your eye, grit is in your nose and in your mouth. Um, and uh, you remember what it was like to be here so many years ago. It all comes flooding back to you. Um, and you have a, a home here in, uh, in Arakeen. You uh, have an opera house. Oh, but yeah, it, I, I'm curious what's happened oh, to it. Oh, we have yes. to see it. Is it yeah. still standing? What's yeah. what's going on there? Well, or maybe it's turned pieces? into a parking garage like that one in Detroit. <sighs> oh, I hope they didn't strip it down for parts. I hope not. You um you travel through the city from the spaceport through the kind of the government zone, and again you are um you are kind of terrified by what has been built here because 
you know, I, I, I keep describing how bright it is and how hot it is, but when you walk in the shadow of the Atreides government p- complex, you are in a deep shadow because it is so huge. The edifice is so gigantic that it gets almost, it blots out the sun. Uh, and so for uh, many blocks of Arakeen, you are just in shadow uh, and shadowy people move on the street. And, and in that shadow, you eventually come to your opera house. Oh, boarded up. Oh. Pieces of it falling off in disrepair. Uh, once a place of great elegance, of perfect house hood and design, it's now uh, a dilapidated carcass of what it once was. It is like Detroit. Yes. No glow globes shine within. It's dark and musty. Uh, yes, it's the only musty place in Arrakis. There's no moisture <laughs> yeah, anywhere. That's right. Somehow there's precious, precious mold within. Yeah, somehow mold found it into your opera house. <laughs> um, and so here you are, and you can use this as a base of operations, but it's not a very comfortable place to stay. They say this is their messiah, and yet they have no culture here. Given this great edifice, they let it fall into disrepair. Is there anyone around that would see us if we tried to break a board off and climb inside? Um, you are close to the slum quarter. Uh, you're kind of on the border between the slum quarter and uh, the kind of the government quarter. So yeah, there are a few people on the street that look like beggars or uh, people pushing little uh, carts uh, full of their wares. Um, would you like to uh, enter this place without anybody knowing? Yes. I think so. And give me yeah. a difficulty zero roll. I'm, it's not a high peril roll. What did you roll? I didn't choose uh, anything to roll about. <laughs> so we should probably ignore my natural 20. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, we, we won't do that. I need to know what you were trying. What? Give me your uh, drive and your uh, and your skill. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, naturally, we would have been rolling. Uh, sorry, my first roll of the day. I got, I got excited. Um, <laughs> I know it was. You're like, roll, let's go. I mean, that's yeah. how everybody always yeah, does it. Yeah. But uh, of course, yeah, we should. Yeah. We should um, ease into these things. Naturally. So what did you? Uh, what did you roll? Oh, uh, sorry. I. Um, the universe owes uh, uh, us nothing. Um, is maybe something uh, of use here. I'm going to say justice is kind of why I want to break in. Um, okay, yeah. Um, so justice, and then what skill did you use? Wow. Um, you know, since I already know I failed, let's go with move. <laughs> um, that makes sense. Um, and you, what did you roll all together? You rolled your 2d20s, you got a natural 20, and what else did you get? Oh, uh, a 13. Which I needed an 11 or lower. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you needed an 11 or lower. Okay, so um, your natural 20 uh, does create a complication for you. And I'm going to let you know that um, you notice uh, as you are kind of breaking into the opera house that uh, someone uh, across, like diagonal across uh, an intersection uh, at the corner of another kind of old dilapidated building is watching you. And then they turn and try to disappear into the city. Oh wow! This person is to describe them. They're in. They're still in the shadow of the Atreides government complex. So it's mostly a silhouette, but you can tell that they're very heavily scarved and robed. Uh, and they kind of peek around a corner and note that you're going in there, and then disappear around the corner again. Okay, now, so in my moment of weakness, I tried to reach for this board and could not pull it off. Um, but I would like to. Uh, look with a look of frustration at at myself um i, I want to run after them very good um uh so um let's do a little pursuit um and this would be a contest so i'm going to have the uh the person you are contesting against roll and then you're going to roll versus that difficulty um so let's see here i think i know exactly the stats I want to use here. 
you have an NPC okay. handy? I have the book. If you, uh, if anybody's interested in buying Dune Adventures in the Imperium, is very good about giving you lots of useful stats. Um, and so let's see yeah, here. There's a ton of fight. There's uh, Troy used like a starter car, and there's, there's a bunch of uh, random NPCs uh, with stat blocks to use. Yeah. So um, that is going to be two successes. So you have a difficulty two to catch whoever this person is to catch up to them, uh, my friend. Uh, Pomeni Seraglio Tyloris. <laughs> That's right. Did I get that right. You told me to come up with three new names. Pomeni Seraglio Tyloris. Yep. You need, you need two Lesser successes. <laughs> okay. You have, um, according to my count, you still have three momentum. Okay, excellent. That's what I have too. Um, yeah, I, I I made this bad, and I gotta fix it. So uh, I would I would like to spend um, I think all of them to get two more dice because the first one's one, the second one is an right. additional two. That would give you four dice to roll to catch up to this person. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Okay, do it. Which dice will not curse me today? Maybe you. And this one. Okay. Okay. I did that thing where I forgot to pick what I'm running with, what I'm rolling for. <laughs> That's uh. okay. Let's pick it now, though. Uh, and you can, and you know, you always get to choose the drive that will most benefit you as long as its statement matches what you're doing. You can spend determination. So I mean, you can choose it now. Choose it now. Uh, the the universe owes this person nothing, and yes. uh, they have no right to know my whereabouts. So there justice, you go. yeah, get him. Damn right. Uh, and battle tactics, I think, will be my skill. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, how did you do? Okay, what, so what, what's your target number with those added together? Twelve is my target number, and then if uh, tactics it, with my focus, a five and below is going to be. Two successes, so I haven't actually looked yet. Oh, a five. That's two. Nice. That's two right there. Done. So you were Success. going for 12, so mm -hmm. um, everything succeeded. I've got a, a six, a nine, and an 11. So one, two, three, four, five successes. Five successes. Um, that is three more than you needed, so you've earned three momentum. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you that right now you can see exactly where this person is going. Uh, and you can continue to follow them, but if you want to spend some momentum right now, you can just outright catch them. So you can either, so it, your your role has netted you for definite sure you, you see a lot about who they are and where exactly they're going, but if you want, you can, uh, you can, um, you can go and catch them right now by spending, let's say, oh, I'm going to say just one momentum. Absolutely, I will. And yeah, I'd also like to use my mask of power on them at some point. Tell me about that mask is my of plan. Power. Okay, so spinning the momentum to catch them. Uh, and the mask of power means I can intimate that I know more than I do about an enemy's secrets. So I can ah. create an asset at no cost, like blackmail evidence or a favor that's owed to create this, this espionage and intrigue. Wow. Uh, very good. Um, and so um, you tell me how you grab this person. They're, they're covered in gray scarves and a gray, a gray hood. Uh, and tell me how you grab them and what you say to them. I grab them by the shoulders from behind and intimately whisper in their ear, we are on a mission from Paul himself. Tell no one or you will be dealt with. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, this... Uh, this person turns around. It's a, it's a male. Um, he's heavily scarved, um, and he pulls uh, down his scarves and says, "Ah, I did not realize there were other agents here on the streets." If we knew of one another, that leaves more up to chance. Absolutely. I, I will forget your face as you forget mine. And I still have my uh, scarf, my mask on, my um, Sibis hood. Yes, if I see anything interesting, any other interesting things, shall I report to you? That would please Paul much. 
Awesome. You call him Paul. <laughs> Uso, if so you casual. You can find me in the square. You can find me in the square with some other pilgrims uh, if you need me. I will look for you. Thank you, pilgrim. Um, and uh, oh, before what up, he pilgrim? turns, before he turns <laughs> up, he goes. I am called, at least in this guy's Samaba. Samaba. And he heads back to the square, uh, the great square uh, underneath the government offices uh, where the Atreides family can look down on the populace of Arrakis. Uh, I slowly swagger back to my friends. <laughs> um, yeah, she uh, still got it. <laughs> she does still got it. I could have asked her to uh, roll to lie, but I don't know. You created that trait and you were, you were, you used, you used mast of power. You use yeah. mask of power, so uh, mast mask of power. So I I feel like it's perfect. Like that that talent worked perfectly in that situation, and it perfectly uh, met with what he expects or the way he sees the world. And so uh, you've used your Bene Gesserit tricks, you Bene Gesserit witch, <laughs> Bene Gesserit, and you have witch. turned an enemy that. asset. To, and to your own. Um, yeah, turned a I liability think, yeah. to an asset. That was awesome. Yes, Very in cool. fact, yes. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give you an asset. I'm going to go ahead and give you an asset, Informant Samaba. Uh, nice. Because Ooh, he said sweet. that he would report to you if you wanted him to. Um, so really well done. You turned a complication. He, he might not have even shown up if you hadn't rolled that 20 <laughs> and you've turned it into a benefit for yourself. So very interesting. That's nice. so cool. Thank you. The system's awesome. Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, very good. Um, you return to the opera house, and now it's time to figure out h- how to get the elephant in the room into a starship and to a new planet. Uh, it's time to figure out how to get your hands on one of those sandworms. We need to. Yes, um, we need to speak with someone skilled in the in the planetology of this place, someone who knows the ecology of the worms in the deep desert. Yes, we need to speak to a planetologist. Um, yeah, um, you wonder kind of where uh, you might uh, might find someone like that. Um, and uh, you know that there's a many government offices here and at least one of them has to do somewhat with the ecology or uh, the environment here. Uh, so in the government offices quarter, you might find something like that. If you go explore and search for it to the library, <laughs> yes, to, the, to the library, basically. Yeah. Or, or would Corin, would she still, would she have any would contacts? I have, yeah. yeah. Fremen. Speak to, speak to the, right? the deep I, desert I, Fremen. Yeah. I still have to be friends with somebody on this. Yeah, someone's <laughs> Maybe the slum quarter has, Fremens that are less um, auspicious that would just n- have information about worms. Yeah, falling on hard times. So, what was established from the first half was that I had been. My upbringing was oversaw by a Bene Gesserit sisterhood, like a small cloister that made sure that I was getting a warrior's training because of my larger purpose in life that they saw that I didn't understand. Would that be somebody I could turn to seeing as how I'm bringing them a Bene Gesserit sister and that they have uh, been- Reverend Mother. <laughs> Reverend Mother. You want to talk to the Bene Gesserit? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I, I think that certainly there is a Bene Gesserit chapter At least house. the ones that were uh, um, responsible for my the overseeing of my upbringing. And the most fun about this is that I get to come up with a bunch of new Bene Gesserit names on the fly. And we, saw, <laughs> we saw how well that worked last we time. Love it. Um, no, it's it's quite all right. Um, as, a, absolutely, the chapter house of the Bene Gesserit here in Arakeen is in the slum quarter. Um, the Bene Gesserit do uh, cover themselves under the guise of a benevol- benevolent order, uh, and so they do do charity here in Arakeen. Um, and so that is where you may find their chapter house. And of course it is not even role worthy to ask you to do that. Cause you've, 
uncovered that it's part of your background. You know exactly where it is. Uh, Corin, would you like to go and talk to the sisters there? I would. Uh, is this something where we could all go? I could just, you know. Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's all move into the slum quarter uh, and uh, let's uh, let's talk to uh, the sisterhood there. You you uh, enter their uh, humble monastery uh, there in the slum quarter. I'd uh, like to and- um, take Corin's hand as we walk and say, "It's always been a dream to see where you grew up." <laughs> I never thought that I would be coming back here in these circumstances with you. Our life has taken us many unexpected places. And I kiss her hand. Oh, this is cool. Like reconnecting. Like after We're lovers, <laughs> Jared. We're I, lovers. I know yes. and I approve. Um, so, uh, so you, uh, you're going to go see your uh, girlfriends uh, where she grew up. Uh, probably have to sleep in her old bedroom. And, uh, <laughs> with all of her weird old trophies. Yeah, they're going to bring out a photo album. Staring. It's going to be very embarrassing. Um, so you arrive and uh, it's uh, actually it looks like kind of a rough place to grow up because if the Wallach 9 uh, monastery complex was sort of spare Oh boy, wait till you see the Arrakis chapter house. Um, it definitely looks like it's seen better days. Yeah. Yes, now of course it's like the a, sisters... like a Salvation Army outpost or something. It is, yeah. Now of course the sisters keep it uh, neat, tidy, I mean immaculate, but um, it's a small, it's a small building. Uh, and um, um, the only a few sisters are, are here because of course uh, the Bene Gesserit are not in power on Arrakis. Uh, uh, or they don't have as much sway as they used to uh, back in the Harkonnen days, and so um, you are met by a uh, by a sister who then uh, brings down the uh, Reverend Mother, uh, who uh, who rules over this place, and she introduces herself as Lupercus Mildred Te. <laughs> There it is. Yes. Lupercus Mildred Te. Would this be a Reverend Mother that I recognize? Mm. Or would recognize me. Yes, this is the Reverend Mother that raised you. You have returned to us, Corin. Welcome. (laughs) I'm sorry that it's taken so long to return, but... And I'm... I am still in your service, and no matter what ways so the fate and the wheels of time will lead me but it seems as though that time is now you've come at a time of great crisis for yes. our sisterhood across the galaxy but also here here where unfortunately certain prophecies came to pass in ways that were unexpected and tragic I do not pretend to know and to understand the things that you are able to see and to understand, but... And well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't try to understand as we do. But you have been keeping up your exercises. Yes. And How can I help you, daughter? For some reason that I am sure you have insight to We have been tasked with a mission that I'm afraid is too dangerous for us to undertake. Do not tell me anything you would not have me know. Once something is learned, it cannot be unlearned. Be very careful. And she kind of- also control your emotions, daughter. You look as if you're about to collapse. I taught you better than to show your true face to those around you. Yes, mother. And she kind of like gives a little side eye to. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, what is Becca? What is your name again? Pomini. Uh, Pomini, yeah. The, Pomini. Uh, th- derived from the name of our moon and the sisters of yes. that planet. Pomini Seraglio uh, Tyloris. I mean, oh, it's. Pomini Seraglio Tyloris. It rolls off the tongue. You can yeah. say all five <laughs> names if you please. Yes, uh, <laughs> Just Pom for short. <laughs> I travel here with a fellow reverend mother. 
I signal with a hand sign, low uh, and and subtly, everything in in the name of the sisterhood. Forgive us, mother. We did not recognize one of our order beneath the Cybus hood. I remove my hood. <laughs> I does, she deserves to see my face. Um, but quick question: using my other memory, is there anything that? The Reverend Mothers I communed with know about Lupricus Mildred Tay. Um, you know, it's very likely. Do you want to do one of those, um, you know, kind of powered up rolls to see if you know anything about her? Heck yeah. Let me read what my other memory gives me real quick. Um, oh. Uh, un- uh, let's see. If I use this, a test of knowledge, auto three successes. Why don't oh. we forego the test then and just give you three successes? Uh, meaning, uh, I'm going to say that knowing something about her is a difficulty one test, so you get two extra successes, and uh, you can use those right now. That brings you up to four momentum, everybody, and you can use those two successes you gained right now to ask additional questions. Here's what you know about Lupercus Mildred Te. Um, it, she uh, has been given... Uh, a very unwanted post. Um, you know, uh, things went completely sideways for the Bene Gesserit uh, here on Arrakis. Their quitsat, satirac, quitsat, quit. Oh my God. Make next paddywhack. <laughs> you know what? He's if there's one satirac. thing a Dune GM should be able to say, it's quizat satirac. There we go. Um, their quizat satirac program went completely uh, out of their hands here. This is where a breeding program of thousands of years uh, got out of control. Uh, at the because, last possible minute. Yeah, at the last possible minute. And because of uh, sort of a traitorous sister, Lady Jessica did not obey her orders. Um, so uh, this is not a post that any Bene Gesserit really still wants to be in. Uh, because here she has to pretend to go with the party line and support... Uh, the Atreides or her presence here in the presence of the Bene Gesserit will be destroyed. Um, so that's what you know for free. Um, and uh, But you wanted information specifically about her. So ask me questions. Ask me up to two questions. Uh, bark, bark, bark is my question. <laughs> right. um, uh, you're speaking in the uh, Bene Gesserit bark language <laughs> among uh, initiated sisters. Whose dog is that? That's mine. Oh, okay. Very cute dog. He's cute, but mm. evil. I know that Corin has a question. Yeah, Corin should ask her a question. This, if this stalls some time with puppies. Um, Corin is wondering if this, if this Jessica disobeyed the New Gesserit orders, can he really be the Kwisatz Haderach? Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. Uh, you know, uh, the, all of the Bene Gesserit believe that he is. Hmm. Um, so that's, that's how I answer that. Um, and so, uh, I, I, I'm going to give you that for free and I'm going to ask, uh, if, if, uh, Pomini, wants to use her her role with her her automatic successes to earn uh, extra questions about uh lupricus mildred tay she can ask those now oh gosh skidden ross any thoughts uh our our goal here is to get a baby worm um i want to know if lupricus has any passions that she studied uh uh before uh, outside of her sisterhood Okay, one of your, one of your, that's a great question. And one of your uh, momentum goes away to ask that question. And uh, you learn that she had, ex- you know, f- through your other memory, that this particular Reverend Mother had extensive dealings with spice smugglers. Oh, wow. wow. Intimate knowledge. So it's she so may know special. what had gone on years ago with the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like this Dresden. Reverend Mother is wild and out. She's got Fremen daughters that she's training mm-hmm. up. She's dealing with spice <laughs> smugglers. Um, she's running games and wheels within wheels as the Bene Gesserit often do. 
but she might also have contacts and access to some equipment that we could use. Yeah. If we figure out how we're going to do this. Yeah. Right. So, uh, would you like to ask another question or would you like to bank that last momentum for three momentum currently for your, for your group? I mean, Let's the only bank other thing it. I, I, yeah. I, uh, oh, I'm going to signal into the hand of Corin. You know, like you can do uh, like the Helen Keller sign language just straight in the mm-hmm. palm. Yep. Um, and I'm going to say she knows smugglers. Sorry, oh. Russ, what were you saying? Oh no, I think this is the wise course of action. That's That seems that seems good. I was going to say the only other question that Pharos has after maybe he, over here in the exchange about like, don't tell me anything uh, unnecessary. It's like well, who would she be telling those unnecessary mm. things to? Hmm. Oh, yeah. who is she afraid of finding out? Who is she out? afraid of finding out? Are the are the Atreides putting the screws to her? Mm. Do we well, want to spend a momentum but, to ask that? But that seems like something maybe that the uh, tr- memories wouldn't give you access to. Um, they might tell you because it's more recent. Yeah, that's that mm. would you be know, more recent than you do. know about yeah. aspects of her character about how how. Uh, trustworthy she is I don't know if she is she worthy of our trust yeah do you want to just ask that and spend that extra momentum I think that that's something if I've heard of this person that's information I need to know are we doing she's a voice off completely trustworthy <laughs> that's why she's telling you not to tell her anything that could be drawn out of her with questioning and mm-hmm. if a Bene Gesserit who controls her complete demeanor uh, and com- you know com- decides what the truth is usually is telling you that that means that the Atreides have incredible information gathering and surveillance uh, operations here she's afraid of being questioned or somehow being found out and she's a Benny Jesuit that's mm. scary yeah you might like she's she right. might be afraid of Paul himself or his mm. sister or exactly yeah. so I think I will signal back uh, and say well, then these smugglers are probably the ones to help us. You wish to talk to some of my old friends? Yes. Not officially a sister, but one who may be able to help you with whatever it is you are doing here in Arakeen. I it used was- to have a contact of old named Teresa. You will find her in the junkyard, in the slum quarter. (laughs) Thank you. You are always welcome here, but be careful what you say within these walls. It is a great pleasure to have met you. So you have another place you can stay, hide out. you You guys are given free access to the chapter house here um uh, so just keep that in mind if you need a different place to hide out or or store something or whatever happens with your operation um and now uh we're almost done for for this session but i would like to know what the final place you're going or what your next step is i would probably say to the junkyard seems yeah to follow this follow this lead where where it takes us yeah yeah we're i would go- say I so, like that we're not going to a library, even as, yes. tantalizing, as tantalizing as that is, <laughs> because that's so close to the heart of power. And now we're seeking a more kind of clandestine means yeah. of, of, the, of the, <laughs> the, 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 the people who are on the ground working directly with the remnants of the, the spice and the worms yeah. out in the right. desert who might know we're, a little bit more about We're going them. to see a uh, Wado at the shipyard. Yes. On the I would think uh, making haste would be in our favor since everywhere we turn is a opportunity to be noticed. Mm-hmm. Very good. And so you soon find yourselves outside of the Oh, junkyard. I will say, as I as yeah. we leave, as we turn to leave, uh, Aurelius does like an exaggerated bow. And he says, uh, you all did see that upon the Lupercal I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? <laughs> <laughs> you are aware of the ancient texts that give me my namesake. I am, my lady. It is a pleasant memory that you evoke, and I. I ship it. Our our meeting, mm-hmm. our meeting was a blessing. We're gonna circle back to this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I reapply um, my sibis hood as we leave. It is likes- well to meet you. I can, I can tell that you have an eye that can always perceive an honorable man. 
Wingman. <laughs> so Wingman. are they all. All honorable men. <laughs> and so I will begin narrating again that you stand outside of the junkyard. Um, and this is quite a junkyard because it's in a science fiction story. So there are entire starships sm- smash up old, uh, you know, uh, ships that run between a planet surface and, uh, and the hayliners. Um, there are uh, old uh, spice harvesting equipment among the junk. Um, this is truly a clearinghouse of scrap uh, from the Harkonnen days and, and even before that. Um, and as you enter, I'm going to give a trait to the scene uh, that um, uh, the scene is threatening um, cool. because as you enter, you notice that there are uh, many young guys uh, and women uh, who look pretty rough uh, and they kind of are just all leaning and hanging around this junkyard. And as you enter, they all kind of get to their feet and some of them are holding old pipes and things like that. Uh, and uh, one of them is like, hold, what do you want here? And then, uh, uh, <laughs> um, who's in charge? I know, it's like, who's... I, I, yeah, who's leading this? Uh, are we going with uh, Fremen to, to Fremen? These are, are not doing... Fremen, actually. Oh, they're these, not. These, uh, some of them are. Uh, you can be. You can be an Arakeen native, but not be Fremen. Yeah. Uh, okay. There are like city folk, and these are all city folk. Um, their heads are shaved in aggressive ways. Their uh, their clothing looks shabby. They look like they've been living lean. Uh, the ascension of Paul Atreides has not uh, helped their uh, their living at all, and they look hungry and angry that you're there. Mm. The trait is threatening, and, and uh, you know what? I'm gonna say to Can Theros, I volunteer? Yeah. Yeah, th- th- these look like the the theater hands you used to hang with. Mm. You should probably do the talking. <laughs> yes, yeah. Ru- a rough sword, a rough, rough sword indeed. A rough sword, stage um, managers especially. And I mm. just kind of walk out, hand, hand raised, it's like, peace, we mean you no harm. We are here to talk with Teresa. You found her, and a woman uh, comes up over one of the heaps of trash. She's standing above all of you, looking down. Um, She's really skinny, and she's got uh, a shock of gray-white hair that's cut short, uh, kind of like a ragged, uh, homemade haircut. Uh, she's wearing, uh, she's covered in tattoos and has uh, kind of a loose jerkin on. And she goes, what do you want here? Only a moment of your time. We have been sent by no less than Lupicus Mildred Ke to have a conference with you. About what? <laughs> I hardly think that's a matter for the public here. If you've come about my former business dealings, you should know I quit. I decided I didn't want to die from complications caused by a Chris knife entering my throat. So I'm going to give you one chance to leave this place and leave it now. All right, oh, no. chance is up. Unfortunately, we cannot she be denied. She spends two threat. Oh, no. Gives a signal. Her thugs move in. Oh, no. And that is where we're going to end for today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dance. <laughs> I was like, we're doing this. Yes. <laughs> it's a rumble. Uh, they're on Arrakis. They're dealing with former spice smugglers. Uh, and they're trying to steal a sandworm. Are they going to be able to do it, listeners, viewers? Uh, sound off in the comments. Um, <laughs> it's been really fun playing with you guys today, and I can't wait to just do more Dune. Do the wait. Dune, dude. Very excited. <laughs> Jared, you're do awesome. I'm loving, loving all of this. So great. You got to yeah. do the Dune, dude. Do the Dune. Nora and all of you guys, it's great. Oh, you make me feel so good. Um, but oh. uh, of course, it's these players that make a GM look good. This incredible cast. Well, let's say goodbye to Skidmar, Ross Bryant, Nora Ibrahim, and Becca Scott. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you for the next chapter very soon. Glass Cannon Nash, we're signing off. We'll see you on Arrakis again in, I think, a week's time. Good night.